Hi everyone and welcome to my new YouTube channel called Medical Talk where we're going to be taking a look at all the most current medical issues and answering all your questions. So just a little background on me. I have worked in the medical field for 30 years now. I'm getting a little bit closer to retirement. It's always been a dream of mine to have some kind of an online presence um, in the medical field. And I have decided to finally hunker down and get to work on a YouTube channel. Um, the new YouTube channel is called Medical Talk. We're going to be covering a whole wide um, range of medical topics. Okay, and we're going to go over some of those in just a moment. But again, back to me, I've been working in the medical field for about 30 years now. And um, I worked in um, all sorts of different departments. Everything from emergency room to radiology. Um, currently, I'm working in radiation oncology with cancer patients um, where we administer radiation um, for different types of cancer. And when you've worked in a hospital and uh, the medical field for 30 years, you tend to go back to school and um, learn different things and um, move ahead and um, transfer into different departments within the medical field, um, which I've done over the years. But anyway, medical talk. Um, again, we're going to go over a variety of different issues. Um, I'm going to make some videos pertaining to um, specific um, topics, you know, um, 10 to 15 videos on each topic so we get a clear sense on um, what they're about and answering your questions. Um, you can definitely put your questions in the comments um, as videos are created and I'll get back to you as soon as possible on your questions. Um, I'll also be uh, referring you to special resources um, that can help um, um, go side to side with the topics that we're talking about. And I think you're going to really enjoy this. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over a few of the um, different topics that I'm going to be covering as this channel progresses. And um, I'm also going to show you a short um, video example of um, a video I created on preventive health care. And then um, I'll be back and we'll wrap it up with a few more topics that I'm going to be covering within this channel. Okay, anyway, I'm so glad that you're here. Um, if you like what you're seeing so far, I really encourage you to go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Um, you'll be notified each time that I release a new video um, and a new medical topic. And that way you'll be sure not to miss anything. Okay, so with that said, let's go ahead and... Oops, sorry. Let's see here. Let's go ahead and take a look here if I can get this off. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at one of our topics, which is going to be high blood pressure. And again, I'm going to do a whole series on high blood pressure. Um, this is just kind of a little prelude to what's going to be coming. So what is um, high blood pressure? Um, blood pressure is the pressure of blood pushing against the walls of your arteries. Arteries carry blood from your heart to other parts of your body. Your blood pressure normally rises and falls throughout the day. And what do your blood pressure numbers mean? Blood pressure is measured using two numbers. The first number, called systolic blood pressure, measures the pressure in your arteries when your heart beats. The second number, called diastolic blood pressure, measures the pressure in your arteries when your heart rests between beats. If the measurement reads 120 systolic and 80 diastolic, you would say 120 over 80, or write 120 over 80. What are the normal blood pressure numbers? A normal blood pressure level is less than 120 over 80. Okay, so again, that's just kind of one of the topics I'm going to be talking about. Again, there's going to be many videos on high blood pressure. I encourage you to keep coming back and taking a look as I update this channel weekly. So the next topic that I'm going to be covering is going to be infectious diseases. 
and infectious diseases are disorders caused by organisms such as bacteria, viruses, fungi, and parasites. Many organisms live in and on our bodies. They're normally harmless or even helpful, but under certain conditions, some organisms may cause disease. Some infectious diseases can be passed from person to person. Some are transmitted by insects or other animals, and you may get others by consuming contaminated food or water or being exposed to organisms in the environment. So that's another topic that's going to be covered here on Medical Talk, the new YouTube channel. And again, um, from any of the videos I create on this topic, go ahead and leave comments below. I'll try to answer as many of them as I can um, as my videos are being put out. So another, another topic that we're going to be covering is preventive care. And guys, this is a big one. Um, I would love to see more people doing preventative care, um, you know, along with healthier eating and more exercise. Me, me as well. You know, we can, we can all do better um, trying to move forward with preventative care, exercise and diet and all those things. But in this channel, Medical Talk, we're going to cover all of these issues extensively. So what is preventative care? Preventative care helps detect or prevent serious diseases and medical problems before they can become major. Annual checkups, immunizations, and flu shots, as well as certain tests and screenings, are a few examples of preventative care. This may also be called routine care. Okay, and what's the difference between preventive care and diagnostic care? Diagnostic care is related to services in which your provider is looking for something specific, often based on the results of a pre preventative test or screening. For example, a radiologist may ask for a follow-up mammogram for a patient. This follow-up is to check for something that may have detected during the preventive or routine mammogram. The follow-up mammogram is diagnostic and not covered as preventative care. Okay, and here's a few examples of preventative care services. Your annual checkup, one a year uh, for your checkup is a preventive service. Getting your flu shot would be considered preventative care. Uh, ladies, getting your mammogram one per year is a preventative service. Um, people with high risk of colon cancer, getting your colonoscopy every five to ten years is a pre preventative care. And um, just a side note on that, um, colon cancer runs um, extensively in my family. And even though I am not a, as old as a lot of people when they start getting colonoscopies, I probably already had, um, I'm gonna say three or four of them, um, just starting at an earlier age, trying to catch it um, if it's something that does happen um, with me. So um, I've been very pro-aggressive when it comes to pre preventative care um, with colon cancer for myself. And getting all your vaccinations, that would be considered preventative care as well. So guys, what I'd like to do now is I just want to show you a short video on preventative care, um, which um, I made. And I hope you enjoy it. And there's going to be a lot more videos to come. Um, after I show you this short presentation on preventative care, I'm going to come back, show you two more topics that I'm going to be covering um, within Medical Talk um, channel here. And um, I'll be back right after the video. No matter the medical condition, the best medicine of all is prevention. While many common medical conditions can be prevented by simply being proactive with lifestyle interventions such as diet, exercise, and the elimination of unhealthy habits, it remains imperative to stay consistent with regular doctor or medical provider checkups and screenings. The importance of remaining consistent with screenings is important for all ages, especially for those in the aging population. In what follows, we'll be detailing many of the most common screening tests for common medical conditions such as heart disease, colon cancer, breast cancer, lung abnormalities, and other health-related conditions. Common Types of Screening Tests 
screening tests play an integral role in the monitoring, diagnosing, and preventing of the most common medical conditions. In the best of circumstances, screenings tell an optimistic story of excellent health. In other circumstances, screenings may provide early detection of a medical condition, another overall optimistic outcome. Failure to obtain regular screenings, however, simply leaves your health to chance, which leaves no opportunity for improvement of any health condition. Below are some of the most common types of screening tests for common medical conditions. Cologuard Colonoscopy Fecal occult blood test Pap test Mammography Stress test Chest X-ray and EKG screening CBC and CMP lab tests a Cologuard test, which is an increasingly more common screening test, seeks to identify or trace any signs of precancerous or cancerous polyps of the colon. It is a much less invasive test than a colonoscopy, which is an examination of the large intestine and rectum. A Cologuard screening test is a stool test that detects alterations in the DNA of cells from the inner lining of the colon. With colon cancer being defined as the third most common cancer in America by the American Cancer Society, it's important to obtain regular colon screenings, whether through a Cologuard test or colonoscopy. Colonoscopy An extremely common and effective screening test, a colonoscopy is a procedure that looks for the presence of colon irregularities such as swelling, irritation, polyps, or other lesions. A colonoscopy is performed by a gastrointestinal specialist, and it examines the colon with an endoscope that has a small video camera and that provides a view of the entire colon. It also has small portals for instrumentation and biopsies of any irregularities or polyps that are identified. Colonoscopies are recommended in the 50-plus population age group. Fecal Occult Blood Test To test for intestinal conditions or as a routine checkup, a doctor might recommend a fecal occult blood test, which is a stool sample. By looking for any sign of microscopic blood in the stool, a doctor can determine whether or not further testing should be performed. A positive fecal occult blood test may be indicative of intestinal conditions such as hemorrhoids, ulcers, inflammatory bowel disease, and diverticulitis. This is a simple test that can be very helpful in identifying early signs of illness. Pap test. Since cervical cancer is among the most common forms of cancer in women, it's important for women to seek regular cervical screenings to identify any sign of pre-cancer or cancer. Women above the age of 21 are encouraged to have this screening test. This cervical test is known as the PAP test, and it is performed by obtaining cells directly from the cervix to be tested. The PAP test is the premier test for identifying the possibility of cervical cancer, and if the test is positive, a biopsy will likely need to be obtained. Mammography Mammograms involve radiological technology that scans the entirety of the breast and captures a detailed image that the radiologist can then examine. This is a screening examination that has become the standard for breast cancer detection. The age to begin such screening is best discussed with your primary care provider and will be based on risk factors and the current health of the individual. Exercise Stress Test Somewhat different from other medical screening tests, the stress test involves real exercise on behalf of the patient, typically on a treadmill. The individual's heart is monitored during the activity to measure the heart's capacity to pump blood efficiently during stressful exercise. More specifically, the test measures the patient's heart rate, breathing rate, blood pressure, and general fitness capacity. This test is extremely useful in the diagnosis of potential heart-related conditions. EKG Screening Heart disease is the most prevalent and fatal disease in America and the world, and a baseline EKG is extremely useful to help maintain good heart health. A screening EKG helps as a comparison tool for any future heart evaluation. Other Routine Laboratory Tests other popular routine screenings used to evaluate the overall health and well-being of an individual include a complete blood count and a comprehensive metabolic panel. These tests directly detect or help detect several diseases, infections, disorders, and abnormalities such as anemia, leukemia, liver disease, electrolyte imbalance, and diabetes. These tests also determine a baseline for future health evaluation for any primary care provider. Final Thoughts Screening tests for common medical conditions are both routine and highly recommended for all individuals. They are the pillars of preventative health. Okay, everyone, welcome back, and I hope you enjoyed that video on preventive care. And I'm going to try to wrap this up pretty quick here so this video doesn't get too long. We're going to take a look at geriatrics now.
This is another topic that I'm going to be covering extensively in medical talk. Probably doing 10 to 15 videos on this and answering questions for you below as they come up. But what is geriatrics? Geriatrics is caring for older adults. Geriatrics is the branch of healthcare that focuses on our unique needs as we age. Just as pediatricians specialize in the health needs of children, geriatricians and fellow geriatrics health professionals specialize in the health needs of older people. Many of us will experience unique health conditions and concerns as we grow older. Geriatrics healthcare professionals are specifically trained to help us manage our well-being so we can continue to maintain health and independence for as long as possible. For an example, after age 65, more than half of us are likely to live with three or more medical problems such as heart disease, diabetes, arthritis, Alzheimer's disease, or high blood pressure. In addition, some older adults may live with additional health considerations such as problems with mobility and difficulty performing daily activities. These factors create medical challenges that geriatrics healthcare professionals can help address. So here we have it again, geriatrics, another topic we're going to be covering. So moving along to the last one here, and we'll wrap this video up, um, is pediatrics. Okay, we're going to be talking about pediatrics, doing videos, answering questions on all sorts of topics with pediatrics. Pediatrics is a branch of medicine that studies the mechanisms of development, diagnosis, methods of treatment, and prevention of children's diseases. The pathologies of this group are studied and dealt with by a pediatrician. Modern pediatrics is divided into several groups, preventative, scientific, social, environmental, clinical pe pe pediatrics. The specialist in the hospital is directly involved in the latter. So here we have pediatrics um, taking care of children and health care um, with children uh, within the community. So this is just another topic that we're going to be addressing. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up. Again, welcome to Medical Talk, uh, my new YouTube channel. And again, I hope you will subscribe. Um, just click the subscribe button. Also click on the bell notification and turn on the notifications. So you'll be notified each time I review a new um, topic here and release a new video. You'll be um, notified of it. Okay, and I'm going to do another video here shortly. Um, before we get started, I'm just going over some of the topics that we're going to be covering. So my next video is going to be pretty much similar but with different topics I'll be addressing um, possibly um, show you a quick other video that I made on that topic but again I want to thank you so much for taking a look at my first video here on medical talk and um, welcome to my YouTube channel and I hope you enjoy it um, as much as I do making these videos for you so once again thank you very much